All right, welcome back everyone. Thanks for joining us at the YSI Early Career Days. In this next session, uh, we're gonna discuss a topic that's not talked about as often, but I believe it can really make you know, a massive difference in the quality of our life as young scholars, and it is our mental health. Uh, mental health is a sensitive topic for many of us. It even you know, is a bit of a taboo in many places, and it's easy to think that it's not something that really applies to you or that you really need to deal with. Uh, but I just wanna encourage you to think, you know, if you ever deal even with a bit of stress, or with a bit of a sense that you're not quite doing enough or not quite are enough. Um, and if there's something, you know, in you that, that you wish you could alleviate that a bit, I really encourage you to uh, tune in and listen closely. Because honestly, the, the truth is that the challenges we face as young scholars, they can really easily contribute to these feelings. Uh, there's nothing weird about it. And I, I can speak from personal experience that if you manage to talk about them and learn a bit more about the resources that are available, in that regard, it can really make a big difference. So we're super grateful to have someone with us, a young scholar who has stepped forward uh, in, in bringing these issues to light. Um, her name is Anna Hostetska, and uh, she has finished her PhD in economics in Barcelona in 2020. She's currently a postdoc in Nuremberg in Germany. And she is somebody who knows what it's like to do a PhD and knows what kind of struggles it comes with. And uh, the way she actually responded to those struggles is that she created a resource, a website called Peace HD. So the URL, we're going to put it in the chat. It's PeaceHD for PhD.com. And uh, this is a website that she shares with PhD students uh, as a way to offer them different options for how to deal with uh, these common challenges that arise. So that it, you know, includes support groups, it includes resources like uh, psychotherapists that have particular experience with, with the PhD journey or with the academia uh, scene. So we're going to hear from her a little bit uh, today and get a sense of uh, what she works on and what her story is. And, uh, you know, if, if you are interested in this kind of thing, listen closely and note that there's also a workshop coming up uh, where we are going to dive into all this deep, more deeply. So um with that you know i i'm just really grateful anna that you're here i hope everyone listens closely and uh welcome thank you so much hi everyone yeah so let's start at the start anna what what was going on in your life uh, that made you first reflect on your mental health okay so i have to say that um in the very beginning it wasn't actually the phd that uh made me uh, take that step. So it was during my PhD, it was uh, in the first years of the process, but it was actually a, a different uh, a personal situation that um, at some point led me to, uh, to therapy. And I have to say that I was quite lucky because um, therapy wasn't such a taboo for me because uh, my cousin, who I'm very close to, was actually going uh, at the time. And so not only did he discuss with me what therapy was and how it was helping him, but he also directly recommended me someone. So I didn't have to do the whole search. I didn't feel so bad about that. And uh, so I started going and um, I quickly understood or with my therapist, we, um, we understood that it was uh, anxiety, which was my problem. I didn't know that. I just felt bad all the time. And um, I have to say that in, uh, in therapy, identifying that and understanding that further um, helped a lot. And of course, this helped also with the PhD process. So even though you know, the, the starting point wasn't the PhD, we got to that topic uh, pretty soon. And, um, and since you know, I've been uh, trying to get better in all of those aspects, but I have to say that by the end of the process, I actually really managed to have some significant improvements so this was great yeah great yeah let's let's unpack that a bit so tell tell us more about the phd part of this and how you know the anxiety that may have shown up in other places first actually also had a role in in the way you experienced your uh, your journey as a phd student yeah yeah definitely 
So um, in general, I'm very open about this. I, I don't mind uh, sharing sharing those feelings. And um, in the PhD, um, I, I, I started scared uh, that I was behind everyone else. Um, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I was really confused because in the in the stage of, of the masters, when you do courses, it's all very structured. So you at least know what the next step is. And then I just didn't really know um, how to start. And I felt that um, everyone else was sort of doing better in that aspect. Um, and I was really insecure. And uh, this insecurity really carried through uh, for, for a long time. And this resulted in uh, many issues, essentially. Uh, given that I was insecure, I was just procrastinating a lot uh, because I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to face that uncertainty. Um, so I just did everything else. And, um, and this made it worse. This was a vicious circle because uh, the longer I procrastinated, the worse I felt about it and the more insecure I felt. Um, so, so this was really problematic. And um, of course, this feeling of insecurity, of um, not being good enough, um, it affects many aspects of the PhD. So if you have to present something, then of course, this gives you heart attacks because um, you don't feel good about yourself. And then suddenly you're going to be exposed to all these people who are going to notice that and that's going to be really bad for you. Um, so I guess that um, this, this became really bad when it started really affecting the, the everyday life of the PhD. And, um, and that's what I was uh, also dealing with in therapy. So, you know, insecurity, it can, it can be there in all of these different parts of our life, but uh, within the PhD, it, uh, it can be really strong because of also the type of work that you do, right? And the fact that maybe you're writing papers alone, that you're not really sure about the outcome. Um, it's a long-term process. So it's not really like a one month project and you have really high expectations um, that can uh, that can kind of cripple you, I guess. That's what uh, that's what happened to me. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I haven't even done a PhD, but I have done graduate school. And I think a lot of those things sound familiar to me as well especially the loops, um, right, of being insecure and then procrastinating and then being more insecure because you're procrastinating. For me, it was asking questions. I was afraid to ask questions when I wasn't sure of myself. And then because I didn't ask the questions, I became more clueless. <laughs> and it just spirals yeah. and builds on top of each other. Yeah. Um, but these are things that people often keep to themselves, right? It's quite rare for someone like you to have the courage to be open about this. Uh, so what about your friends? Did you talk with them while you were going through this? So especially connected to the fact that I had uh, my cousin who had done therapy and I actually had someone to talk to about that. Um, I was more confident to maybe speak to other people. Um, also, there were times when um, I just looked uh, really unhappy and then I talk a lot. So I wanted to explain why I was looking so unhappy and what was bothering me. So I did uh, start uh, sharing that with, uh, with uh, my friends, uh, with my family. And uh, eventually I, um, I sort of got uh, other people to also tell me the same uh, because it's always hard to open up about this, but I was a bit more used to maybe opening up. And then this meant that maybe others could trust me to, to also tell me that they, they also knew some of those feelings. So, um, yeah, I, I, that helped me a lot, actually, uh, because, I mean, me sharing, that's one thing. Then if someone also told me that they felt the same, then I didn't feel alone anymore. And I thought that was really important. And in right. fact, um, go on. Um, so I actually, uh, so as part of the therapy, I went to two of these uh, weekend retreats and uh, I got uh, in the first uh, retreat, a sort of support group of, of, of people with anxiety issues. And then we would have a WhatsApp group where we would share uh, when someone was going through something. And this was great because they really understood. 
And um, the second year when I went, there were two people who were actually doing PhDs. So in the previous one, uh, no one was in a PhD program. And in the second one, uh, these two uh, girls in a PhD, uh, they had this extra layer of, wow, yes, we understand each other. Uh, this is great. So that, that helped us even more. So, you know, I realized, of course, it was really helpful to have my support group of people who understand anxiety in general. But those who also understand the PhD aspect, that's great. And it really uh, sort of benefited us. Right. So I imagine that also gave rise to you uh, deciding to take this as a specific um, focus area and build a resource for others, right? Is that what led you to make that decision? Yeah, exactly. So, so when thinking about what could be improved for PhD students, I thought about different lines and one of them was definitely this one. Um, having someone who's going through the same thing and sharing that on a regular basis was really helpful for me. And um, given that uh, I'm observing that this happens to many PhD students, then support groups would be uh, potentially one good way uh, to make this experience better. Another way uh, was a bit more in the sort of therapy uh, direction where I thought, uh, you know, not all therapists know this world of academia and the particularities of it. Um, and um, it's actually very helpful when the, the therapist is already familiar with it. And also, where do you search for one uh, who will sort of understand um, those problems? Um, so I thought about um, having a platform where these therapists uh, can actually give online therapy. So to connect PhD students to therapists who know something about that, uh, that topic. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. I just want to hammer this home for the audience, I think, because I see that you're making two really useful points. One of them is, uh, first of all, the PhD journey comes with all sorts of particularities and kind of sp like puts you in a specific circumstance that creates or that gives rise to some of these challenges, right? So maybe, you know, anxiety shows up whether you do a PhD or not, but if you do a PhD, you know, it might be a little more likely or it might um just be a little harder to get around it just because of the way in which it's structured right so people don't really need to think about it as oh something that's wrong with them oh you know i'm broken like no 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 you're in a situation that is challenging the way it is set up particularly if you're trying to do new economic thinking if you know on top of the phd situation you're also trying to swim against the stream and fighting this uphill battle of doing research that not a, not everybody recognizes as valuable so you know it's not it's not your problem <laughs> it's the situation second of all you are facilitating the process um, of finding those resources because it can be so confusing i think to to find your way around uh you know you can go on google and say therapist near me but doing that feels a little insane and it's if you do do it if you muster the courage to go online and look you get flooded with all kinds of things that point you in a million directions and it's not quite clear which ones are good or or affordable or actually helpful or where to really start um so i mean i think you're doing such valuable work with that i want to um shift gears a little bit and uh, maybe talk a bit specifically about the workshop. So the young scholars that are um, here listening, you should know, uh, Anna is doing a workshop specifically for YSI members. Um, and it's a two hour thing on March 22nd. And it's a chance to really kind of dive into this deeply. So Anna, tell us what, what would the workshop look like if people join in, what are they gonna get? Sure, sure. So th the workshop is going to be me and two therapists from, from PCHD. And uh, just to tell you a little bit about them uh, before I talk more about the workshop. Um, so both, uh, both therapists have actually experience with uh, PhD students. So they've had them in therapy. Um, and uh, we've done these workshops together before. And uh, they have different approaches to therapy. So this, I think, is also something interesting for you, given that uh, 
clearly not every therapist has the same uh, tools and um, does the same style of therapy. So you could uh, have two points of view from these two therapists. And what we will do together is really dive in more into those issues. So the ones I'm talking about here that I've experienced and others that um, uh, other PhD students experience, we're going to talk about you know, where they come from, what they really mean. Um, the therapists will touch upon some solutions that uh, maybe are a bit more general. Um, we will also talk about the relationship uh, between a student and the advisor, which is something that comes up quite a lot as something problematic um, or something that creates uh, stress. And um, so we're going to have this first part where we're going to really go, go deeper in, into those issues. And then we're going to have a second part where anyone in the audience can ask questions. And these questions can be asked anonymously. So, uh, you know, you don't have to be scared. Um, and uh, then the therapists will give you um, their opinion. They will tell you what they think um, uh, you might be able to do with the, whichever situation you're dealing with. Uh, but uh, this is not uh, a therapy session, right? So it's uh, just more of an informative session uh, that we hope uh, will let you understand a bit more uh, the background of these issues. Fantastic. And so people shouldn't uh, be too worried, right? If they don't want to disclose who they are, they can just listen or how, how does it work with the interactive portion? I guess. They yeah, absolutely. Um, they don't have to, they don't have to interact if they don't want to, if they just want to sort of listen in, get more information, and then maybe also find some of the questions of the others interesting and the answers of their therapists then that's perfectly fine. So um, there is no one will be forced to speak. Uh, you know, it's really uh, voluntary. Um, and if someone wants to ask a question, then uh, they have the space to do that um, at the end. But uh, yeah, I encourage you to attend because it's, uh, I think it's very interesting to go, uh, go into that and, and hear the opinion of the therapists and uh, hear a bit about yeah, where where this is coming from to understand also that indeed there are particularities about the PhD setup, but then um, the way anxiety and, for instance, depression work is going to be more or less the same uh, in other contexts. But what maybe the PhD context uh, does is make it uh, less easy to identify or um, or uh, stronger, let's say, in some cases. Right. Right. And from what I understand, uh, the workshop will also help people kind of understand more specifically what something like anxiety really is. Right. Because we use this word a lot. We use the word depressed a lot, but sometimes we don't actually know how they're different or how they're the same, how they relate to something like imposter syndrome. So it's also about building a vocabulary, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Building a vocabulary, uh, for instance, to understand better the difference between stress and anxiety. Right. Because, uh, yeah, we sometimes use them interchangeably when uh, they aren't actually the same. And uh, the therapist will really uh, explain a bit better uh, all of that and connect it to all these other issues, because in the end, they're all interconnected. And so it's interesting to, to see uh, the, those connections and sometimes to see that when you you break one part of that circle, then, you know, the rest uh, gets much better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe you can say more about that, because I, I, I imagine the workshop can be a first step for someone, um, but obviously it's not going to be a cure-all, right? Like in the end, it's a longer journey. It might take a lifetime to really uh, get there, um, but it puts you on a path. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about how it's been for you, how things have gotten better um, for you and how that shows up in your work. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So, um, so one thing that I that I often say that uh, is a concrete improvement is that I used to be really scared of presenting, um, and so I always really hoped that no one would show up. <laughs> so I was just hoping for like one person uh, at a presentation, and um, then when I understood, because I used to take it very personally, and you know, like any. Um, 
negative feedback uh, about my research or not even very negative, just any comment on you could do this, I took as, oh, I didn't do that, hence I'm not good enough <laughs> and, and, um, and all, those, uh, all those thoughts. And when I sort of eliminated that and I understood that this is the way it works, um, you know, if um, there is a comment on what I could do, let me write that down. That's very useful and I can do that in the future. Um, then I started to feel much better about presenting and I actually hoped for the opposite. I really hoped that people would show up because I really wanted them to listen to what I had to say and give me those comments so that I could improve my work. And um, this really helped. And this helped at the same time with procrastination because I was no longer scared of, you know, working on a project and finding out that one thing doesn't work because I knew that there were millions of other things I could uh, actually do and that it was also part of the process. So in this, uh, I definitely saw improvements. And in general, uh, now in the, I don't feel this anxiety uh, all the time. So of course there are stressful moments, but that's more of a temporary thing, I think, because I can identify a bit faster when I'm not okay. And that really is one tool that therapy gave me. It's um, understanding when I'm not okay and then knowing what I should do in that situation to be okay again so that it doesn't go too far. Yeah, yeah, very powerful. I mean, what you're saying about before kind of feeling anxious almost continually or it's sort of being normal to feel anxious um that's a lot of what I experienced and then once I gained some tools I thought oh my goodness I I don't have to feel bad all the time like I get to feel good uh, what a surprise um and it can really kind of be this eye opener um so I I, I guess that's another point I want to emphasize for the audience is that you may not even realize how much better you could feel um, if you gain some more some more resources on this. And I mean, clearly it's working because here you are now speaking to a group, um, you know, like a complete professional. And so so much growth is possible, I think, for everybody. Um, that's that's really important to take away. We have a couple uh questions that are that are some some listeners brought in so i just want to make sure i pull at least one of those as well um kurt's already kind of seems like he's ready to dive into the workshop so <laughs> he says you know how do we turn off the analytical part of our brain um when we're dealing with our emotions um and you know the stresses of the phd process because i guess for for an academic this analytical part of the brain is just running 24-7 um, when sometimes you kind of feel the need to put it down and you don't know how. Are, is this the kind of question that can, can be answered at the workshop or how would you? Definitely, it can be, an it can be answered at the workshop and um, it can be answered in, answered in much more depth, but I can tell you already that uh, uh, mindfulness or any sort of physical uh, activity uh, or any creative activity is really helpful in that. So, okay, super. but but for sure, the the therapist can tell you a lot more about that if you're interested in in the workshop. Yeah, great, great. So we've we've put the links in the chat now as well. So there's PhD for PhD.com. That's Anna's website, which is full of resources. And then below that, there's YSIProject.org/workshops. That's where you find the form to sign yourself up. Um, I would recommend that you go quick because there's limited seating, right? This is meant to be a small group, so it's not like 100 people dialing in. Um, so just go and reserve your seat. But then, uh, Anna, maybe you can also um, mention, you know, what if what if somebody wants to go sign up and, it, and all the seats are already taken? What else can they do um, if they don't get to attend the workshop? Sure, sure. So, um, so in, on the on the website, actually, the the first things you can do uh, is the first thing you can do is sign up to a PhD support group. So uh, these groups are um, so I create these groups from people who sign up, and then I do the first meeting with the group where we sort of set up um, the, the objectives and set up the the frequency of the meetings and everything. And then the groups uh, keep meeting and, and they, they discuss basically their experiences 
And uh, to tell you that I've had recently the one year anniversary uh, meeting with one of the support groups, uh, they're still going, uh, some of them. So uh, I encourage you to, to sign up and I will be creating new groups uh, in the next few weeks. And um, the other option, of course, if you feel like uh, you would benefit from therapy, then you can actually sign up, uh, well, not sign up, you can uh, simply ask for a therapy session with uh, one of the therapists on the site. And otherwise, um, if you'd like to answer a little bit more about your PhD experience, or if you're already uh, finished with your PhD, you can also share uh, and give some advice to the current PhD students. That's another option that, uh, that is on the website. So I encourage you to do that and otherwise also to talk about your experience in general, to share it with others. Yeah, fantastic. So we have support groups, we have, you know, being able to connect with a therapist, um, you know, even if you are somewhere totally like geographically differently located, you can just find this therapist and at least connect with them and see if there's something possible, right? Uh, so it's yeah. a great first step. Maybe you can say a little bit more about the support groups. Those are people that don't yet know each other, or they don't necessarily live in the same place, but they are all PhD students. So um, at the moment, most uh, most uh, who are signing up are PhD students, but they're from the whole world, uh, basically all continents for the moment. Um, I think uh, overall um, 18 countries and from different PhD fields as well. So when you sign up, you can say whether uh, you would like to basically avoid people from the same field in case you just uh, don't want to find someone you might know in your uh, PhD support group and from the same university. So then uh, usually they don't know each other at all. And uh, then uh, we, meet on, we meet online to, to set up everything and then uh, you keep going. So um, this, is the way, uh, this is the way it works. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Well, we're very close to time, but I think before we let you go, uh, maybe you can share with us the most sort of the most useful thing that you've integrated into your routine, into your daily life uh, that has come out of all your work that you've done with PhD. You know, what is maybe the main uh, key piece of, 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 of concrete advice that you could give somebody who is in a similar situation to you years ago? So I think that um, really taking care of yourself is a priority, is what I've learned. So basically, um, it's always more important to be okay than, you know, work. Uh, so if being okay means uh, taking time off, that's what you should do. If being okay means you need to meditate every day in the morning, uh, then you should do that or you know, thinking, I guess, figuring out what is good for you and what you need, and then making that a priority. Wonderful. Yeah, basically finding those non-negotiable things in your in your life that you know you need and you make the effort yes, to do it for yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it's often so hard, right, to uh, stand up for yourself in that way, but actually it makes all the difference because you'd have more to give um, so long as you do those things that really help you nourish yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's it's hard to also figure them out in the beginning when, mm -hmm. you know, you don't actually sit down to think about it and try different things. And then when you know them, it's also hard to implement sometimes. But I think it's uh, really worth. So I encourage you to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's work. It, it takes practice. It's work. But I mean, the rewards are great, I think. So I, I'm so grateful that you were here today, Anna, for you know giving us this little, I guess, preview, a little teaser um, of what you have to offer. And uh, I really encourage everybody to sign up for the workshop before it's full. Um, but you know, if it fills up quick, I'm sure we'll have you back in the future and, and keep uh, chipping away at these issues because they make such a big difference um, in our lives. So thank you for all the work you do and thank you for being here today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, and uh, I look forward to those uh, to seeing those who are joining the workshop soon, and uh, the rest maybe next time. Fantastic. All right, take great care. See you soon. Thanks. Bye. Everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you.